Erev Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benum. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have some very interesting things that are going on in and around the world uh, as it relates to Israel and as well as far as what the Vatican is doing uh, in the world too that is definitely going to be causing some mayhem in the very near future. But well, let me take you to the first news bit here. The European Parliament, this just came out, by the way, on Israel National News, says the, the title of the article is The European Parliament Sees No Need for a Jewish State. Imagine this. This was as a result of a vote that was done uh, that just came in. The European Parliament passed a resolution on the, on the EU's role in the Middle East proce uh, peace process Thursday, but rejected an amendment calling for Israeli-Palestinian negotiations to be based on the two-state principle. Now, this come in today from the EU. It said the amendment was rejected 421 to 134 with 59 abstaining in what the critics see as an expression of the EP's reluctant to accept Israel's very right to exist. Uh, let me just read a little bit more to this article to you here. Uh, Martina Anderson, a member of the European uh, Parliament, in an intervention just before the vote, warned that support for the amendment would pay for the ethnic cleansing of the non-Jewish population. The American Jewish Committee's uh, Trans, uh, Transatlantic Institute said following the vote that it is a disappointment that the EP did not endorse the principle of two states for the two peoples. The United Nations Resolution 181, the partition plan passed by the UN in November of 1947, specifically called for dividing Palestine into, into independent Arab and Jewish states. Now, notice the language that is being used in there, to divide Palestine. Now, the word Palestine is a Roman word. In fact, when the Romans conquered uh, Israel back in 70 AD, later they actually uh, called it uh, Palestine. The Romans actually renamed the, the, the region of Israel as Palestine. And still to this day, the Catholic Church insists on making sure that they're under Roman occupation and Roman control, which is what we see today. Israel is certainly under a Roman occupation, as much of the rest of the world is under a Roman occupation. It is certainly the Catholic Church that controls the governments of the entire planet Earth. And the United States is about to see just how realistic that is when Pope Francis actually visits the United States here in the coming uh, weeks here, coming up here in September. Uh, let me go on back to the article here. It states here that um, uh, that the uh, Let's see, the, the, uh, with, with each state consulting the respective homelands for its people, said Daniel uh, Schormenthal, Shor director of the Homelands for Its Peoples, uh, AJC Transatlantic Institute. It is the region of this very concept of Jewish homeland in the region that led to the first Arab-Israeli war and that is still the core of the conflict, and it is unfortunate the European Parliament failed to reaffirm this principle, thus missing an opportunity for a constructive support of the peace process. Now, I might bring to your own remembrance here, friends there, uh, those of you that may not be aware of this, in 1920, the, the British actually recognized that there would be a land for the Jewish people, for their own homeland, and Israel was that was specified as that land, and uh, this was then they were they were not the uh, uh, the United Nations, but it was the uh, the 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 World League League of Nations at that time, but it's long since uh, forgot the promise that was made to Israel. 
Now, another interesting article here, and it's in more than one place, but I caught this on Now the End Begins. My wife shared this article with me. Rick Warren says Pope Francis is the Pope of all Christians worldwide. I mean, imagine that. Pope Francis is the Pope of all Christians. You know, that makes him your leader. Just as the Catholic Church clearly states that the Pope is the head of all Christendom of the entire planet Earth. All right, now it says here on their article here, and by the way, you can catch this article in our uh, Facebook page, Israeli News Live, uh, states here, and I heard another voice, now they quote the scripture, 18.4, and I heard another voice from heaven uh, saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Now, let me say clearly to you this. This is more of a prophetic uh, update here when I bring this news out to you here. You must realize as true believers in Yeshua, this Roman system that is about to, to begin here worldwide and be enacted as a new world order, yes, you will see a collapse of the economy. It will be short-lived. I've spoken this to you guys for months and years. I've said that when the economic collapse comes, it would be short-lived. Because why? The scripture plainly teaches in the book of Revelation that the, when, when, the, when the Rome is finally destroyed, when God brings her into to, to remembrance and destroys her for her evils and evil ways, the whole world wonders and the rich men and the, and the merchants of the earth, and they said, how could this woman be brought to naught in only one hour? For she has made the world rich by her delicacies. You see, the, the merchants of the earth have not yet come to that. That place yet. It's going to be an economic downfall, and then the Rome will bring up the new world order with a new turn and bring so-called peace to the world. It's not a real peace, and therefore it is a false peace there. And if you participate in this Roman system here, because most people are going to fall for it, they're going to think, well, this is not the mark of the beast. This isn't it. We're supposed to get a microchip stuck in us somewhere, you know? Well, you may get a microchip, but I'm telling you, the Bible says if you have the name or the number of the name, you still take the mark. In that Roman system, you won't be able to participate in. You'll take the mark of the beast if you participate in the New World Order economic system. Remember, when Yeshua was here on the earth, and the early Christians there, they did not, they, they were a separated group not participating in the Roman system. You see, it was totally separated from all of this. So I, I wanted you guys to really think about this because God says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. The two witnesses are coming to bring the plagues on this entire earth for rejecting the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is something we got to take really serious, friends. Anyway, let me share some more of this article here with you where they go into it. There is a hard cool core full court press happening right now to unify all Christians' denominations under the banner of the Roman Catholic Church. And the charge is being led by none other than the, as they put it here, the apostate pastor, Chris Lom founder, Rick Warren, and Saddleback Church in California. Warren has purpose dri the purpose-driven plan to break down and destroy the Christian church and unite the pieces with Rome. I, I agree with them wholeheartedly. And, uh, and, and we've seen many other, even John Hagee. Now, John Hagee, we don't see as much saying these things, but he just wrote his uh, like two or three page apology letter, which is on the Catholics website, apologizing for ever calling them an apostate church and, and all the other things. He totally did a, like a crab walk backwards uh, or a crawfish, we should say. Um, Anyway, it goes on to say, in the above video, Rick Warren is seen slying, referring to the Pope Francis as our Pope. Now, you're seeing the uh, seeing, seeing him speak here, but you don't get to see the wording there. But that's exactly what he does. He says, our Pope. He's not my Pope, I promise you that. And then going on to brag about what a great job he is doing. He wants you to... to uh, blithely assume that the, that a course of Pope Francis is, 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 is the spiritual head over all Christianity and not simply over the Roman uh, Catholic Corporation. He slips in 
like that's what everyone already thinks and believes. This is nothing more than mental conditioning, they write, they write in their article. A, a Bible-believing Christian under no circumstances ever would acknowledge that any pope in the Roman system had any sort of rule over them of any kind. And I have to agree with that. You, you have to keep in mind, on the, on the Catholic flag, there, there are two... Uh, keys on that flag, and that shows that the Pope believes that he has both uh, spiritual powers of the world over all the Christians of the world, uh, over all religions of the earth, in fact, and as well as all political power as well. He claims to have all political power, and clearly, it's obvious, every leader of the world goes to the Catholic Church. Why is it? I mean, if, if he doesn't have all the power, then you tell me, why are all the leaders going to the Pope of Rome? It's always been this way, not just with Pope Francis. It was before Pope Francis, Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict, every one of them. World leaders go to the Pope. And you're looking for an Antichrist somewhere else? It's beyond me. Everybody says, well, it's just a false prophet. I mean, please wake up. Somebody's got to wake up over this. In another video here, it says Warren lays out his reasons for why all Christian denominations should be united under Rome. Yeah, so you can take the mark of the beast if you really want to know the truth. While failing miserably in his lame attempt to explain away Mary worship and worship of dead saints, he very incorrectly asserts that we all worship the same Jesus, which if the Bible is true, we clearly do not. Warren holds great sway over the millions of his Laodicean Christian followers who simply accept, uh, accept what he speaks as the truth and will never once check it against Scripture. The Roman Catholic Jesus is received by eating a magic wafer and drinking wine. The actual Jesus of the Bible is received by grace through faith and nothing else one has nothing at all common with the other. Of course, we do believe in a communion service, but we don't believe that the Catholic Church priest can just take and wave, wave a magic wand over the, over the implements that God has and just turn it into the body of Jesus Christ and his blood. But the point is, friends, it is a very serious hour that we're living in, and we must wake up. You must recognize what is happening also, by the way, keep in mind, we will be in Israel this coming weekend. We will be getting, we are there preparing, speaking at the conference there. Uh, you can take and, and you can register to watch this conference live. Uh, Brother Kellen Davison on his website, reconciliationwithisrael.com. We do need your support and your prayers in this conference here. We will be speaking uh, it's an anti-Semitic conference to unite the Jewish people and the Christian people closer together. And the one thing that we will be showing is helping our Jewish brothers there recognize prophecy that's been fulfilled in the very hours that they're living in. And there are many of these prophecies they have not recognized themselves. So pray for us. Stand with us. We need your support in bringing this to the Jewish people. There will be uh, at least about 500 Orthodox Jews attending at the time that we speak, and as well as um, um, many, many other well-known speakers from uh, different parts of the world, including Orthodox believer, uh, believers in, uh, uh, say, Orthodox, Orthodox Jewish believers that will also be speaking during this conference, as well as Christian speakers. Pray for Israel. Pray for her peace. Pray for her deliverance, because that hour is at hand. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Visit us on our website, israelinewslive.org or israelreturns.com. Shalom.